Welcome to ABCDE podcast. I'm your host, Joy. I am Lao Bai. In this podcast, we'll be exploring the latest groundbreaking ideas, cutting edge technologies, and game changing development in a decentralized world. Hi, everyone. Welcome to ABCD podcast. In 2024, we know AI continues to dominate the headlines and investments in both the Web 2 and Web 3. And we actually see a lot of innovations on AI、um, and crypto, like decentralized computation, decentralized data storage. And today I'm sitting down with the co founder and CEO of Xerox Scope,、uh, one of the top on chain data companies in this space. Philip, welcome to our podcast. Thank you. And thanks for having me.、Um, how about we get started by the intro of yourself and also a little bit of background s about the company? Sure.、Um, well, about myself, I got into cryptocurrencies、uh, more than 10 years ago.、Uh, I'm a software engineer with eight years of experience. I had the opportunity to work in an industry that not only I love, right, but also to be part of it with so long, for so long and be able to see it、uh, grow. I co founded c e r o x c o p e two years ago.、Uh, particularly, the idea came by to, with, that we wanted to design some of the metrics and analytics that were missing from the space, particularly trading signals、uh, that took into consideration、uh, not only on chain events, but also data that was being generated outside of the chain, so called to speak. And that's how we launched the company two years ago. So, Philip,、um, I think the, the, the audience most Interested or curious is about is、uh, what exactly is Xerox Scope currently building?、Uh, and we know that it's、uh, doing data analysis on chain.、Uh, some people are using Dune Analytics, some people prefer Nansen, and some, pre- some people prefer Xerox Scope. So, what do you reckon you guys are currently building? What do you think the most differentiate from your product to the other similar competitors? Yes, there's a lot of、uh, factors that you can take into consideration in order to compare the companies.、Uh, I'm going to highlight two of the most powerful ones、uh, because that sets us apart from the competition. One of them is that z e r o x c o p e like I mentioned previously, has two years on the market. For over two years, we have been collecting data from our daily active customers, and we use this data to reinforce and fine tune. Our large language models in house. This technique is called as human reinforcement learning. It's very valuable input when you're training、uh, neural networks, particularly for the case of large language models. There's a, a case to highlight, so to speak, the importance of this, and it's what's happening between the large language model of Google, which is、uh, Gemini. Compared to ChatGPT's OpenAI. As we know, g o l d w i t c h e m i n a has been recently、uh, struggling to find、uh, deliver accurate answers because it doesn't understand certain modes of speech.、Uh, for example, it's been, lo- it's been lacking the ability to understand sarcasm. That's what it was using、uh, newspapers such as The Onion as reliable、uh, sources of news, right? Compared to OpenAI, which is a more Robust capability to be able to understand these nuances of、uh, human speech. So, human r e i n s p o r t i o n learning is extremely important because even if you have the exact same data sets as us,、uh, you will still need to be able to have the exact same customer base, and that takes a lot of time to build. So, we are very proud of, of that data set from us. The second aspect from c e r o x c o p e this is a part to a lot of its competitors, is our ability to be able to transform unstructured data using text to see. So, traditionally,、um, a lot of AI companies The way they work is that they feed the model of their database towards the AI. So it has an understanding of its、uh, structure. But this structure is set forward by humans, by the developers. So developers are responsible for sort of generating and creating the relationships by the data that the company、uh, is collecting and wants to push f o r t down towards customers. The ability of Xerox Scope is that we let our own AI that has been trained draw up these connections and this、uh, relationship with the other data. We use various techniques among them.、Uh, one of the most popular is known as、uh, Text to SQL. So, what this allows us is to have a very good scaling when it comes to the type of offerings that we can give to the customers. We only need to make sure that the data that we store it, it is accurate. But when it comes to the relationship between data points, for example, price data compared to time that news came out. Or price data to social sentiment, we leave the AI、uh, almost entirely. Right. And you mentioned the large language models of、uh, Gemini from Google. Are you using Gemini as your base large language models and using on chain data to fine tune it, or you are building some large language models from scratch yourselves? That's a very good question.、Um, we work with all large language models.、Uh, the reason being is that some large language models outperform their counterparts. 
on specific tasks. So for example, you can evaluate a large language model for arithmetic reasoning. And the reason this is important is that because as you know, on the EBM, right, on the, on, on the blockchain, uh, virtual machines, there's a lack of uh, floating points values. So everything is uh, uses integers. And the way you represent uh, decimal places is by having a very large integer of about 18 decimal places. So when you're doing arithmetic operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, uh, dividing to calculate balances, it's important to take into consideration that the AI has the capability to understand up to that precision. So that's one factor I can highlight. And the other factor is that there's a lot of modern benchmarks that we use in order to compare AI, life, uh, AI or life language models across one another. And we do so internally as well. One of the components, like you mentioned, was the human reinforcement learning that we take uh, into consideration to be able to select the AI that's going to be performing that task, particularly for that domain. Our blockchain more language model in-house, it's called Jarvis. We had the inspiration coming from Iron Man uh, suit, and we felt we were inspired called to do the same thing, right? We want to sell the Iron Man suit to our customers. Jarvis. <laughs> Nice name. So since you guys are using like Jarvis, uh, this this large language large language models, uh, what specific problems you have your guys to resolve, especially on the DeFi tradings? If you think about it, what are the ways where and, and how we interact with large language models or artificial intelligence in, in general? The way that the consumer works with AI is that it currently it's limited to a browser only or a text only application, right? You will submit a, a prompt or a query, it will give you back some answer. But once you receive this information, there's not much else for the AI to do, right? For example, if you ask it about the weather, the AI might tell you information about the current weather in your city or some other place, but uh, that's about it, right? But I think this is going to be changing quite soon. The ability for AI to have integration with other programs it's something that's going to accelerate uh, very, very fast. Um, the large language companies know this and they're already making their move. So this is one of the reasons that we have OpenAI getting integrated with, within Apple and Apple iPhones and, and products and services. We're taking a similar approach where we see Jarvis as being the middleware of artificial, of, uh, artificial intelligence when it comes to Web3. So imagine the following situation. Uh, you're developing a new protocol a new protocol for swaps or providing liquidity or perhaps a DAO. What are the ways that your users are going to, to interact with your protocol, your company? Well, they have uh, primarily the traditional way, which is going through the documentation, doing their own research and on social media, following the accounts in multiple places. Perhaps if they have the ability to read code, they're going to read the open source code as well. But the interaction is still limited by the natural language, right? I will need to be able to go through all, uh, to everything that you publish in order for me to make my assessment. Uh, artificial intelligence is changing this drastically because now companies need to be able to offer the same experience, but through an AI companion. So people are freely able to reach their own conclusion and ask, uh, but do it their own way. Zero Scope is going to be integrating Jarvis to a lot of ecosystem and L2s to be able to empower artificial intelligence as a feature of networks. Also, Jarvis AI is going to be able to have the ability to transact on behalf of the users, interact users' intent, and it's also going to be the first AI large language model to execute smart contracts. Right. So that's, that's matched the intent centric, which is current DeFi trading trend in the next wave. What about the accuracy and efficiencies? Would Jarvis tell me a better buying position or selling position of Bitcoin or Ethereum? Like, uh, is this the best time to buy, best time to sell? <laughs> is that something he's going to do? It, it is actually a feature we are working on improving every day, but it's a feature that we have released as a beta and it's available right now. So for everyone that is listening, you can go to ai.crxcope.com. Dot com and start today we offer a free tier that allows you to ask up to 400 questions per day of uh, pretty much everything you want to find out uh, the example you were mentioning about uh give me the best coin that has the most positive outlook uh this is something that you can do we collect kol metrics so we actually track over something like over 15,000 kols across social medias and we find out what they're saying we analyze this through sentiment analysis software uh, we collect on-chain metrics, we collect news sources, we collect social media activity as well. 
And we feed all of the data to the AI, and the AI's Jarvis is responsible for generating a score that indicates the likeliness of the price going up in the next 24 hours. So this is a feature that is currently live, and we have tested it internally, showing very promising results. And this is one of the reasons why we want to continue pushing uh, this product. When it comes to the accuracy, right now, average performance that we had uh, in May, it, this is the uses internally, was something about uh, north of 300% with a winning rate of about uh, 75%. Uh, I, I think that's the uh, latest numbers that we wrap up from uh, last month. It's going very well. Uh, we need more data to continue on. Improve. Any successful story you can share with us? Like, uh, I remember Jackson shared some tweets on May. I remember that was the time that PayPay went high. He said as uh, Xerox Scope was giving the signals hint of PayPay is going to pump very soon. Yes, uh, we, we and we caught it internally as well. Right, right. Any other similar stories you can share? that uh, what direct scope can help on the trading signals. And we are the company that tracks the most tokens from any chains out there. Uh, I don't know, you know what the listeners are having in their portfolio, but most likely than not, we have information about what you're holding and what you're looking to buy at as well. So my suggestion is for anyone that's listening, you can start today, get a free account. You can ask about what you're currently holding, what you're trying to hold, right? It, it takes 60 seconds to ask a question to Jarvis and get a very accurate answer uh, regarding some of the things that you should be considering before you make any decisions, either buying or, or, or selling. We use a signal, uh, like I mentioned internally, for our own company's fund. Well, I cannot mention right now that any project, right? I don't want to be chilling in any project that the company is uh, sort of having. Uh, but it's also very important to take into consideration that success in trading, if I were to assign a score to the uh, different aspects of it, I would say that 90% is risk management, adequate risk management, right? Whenever you invest into something, I think the best mindset that you can have is I'm going to invest this money and I'm going to consider 100% loss until I get a realized uh, gain, right? I think a lot of people don't have this idea. They, I recently read that uh, one in uh, 13 people out of 100, so 13% out of 100, they actually make money on, on a casino, on a traditional casino. But when it comes to day trading, it comes down to 1 to 100. So you have better chances, a thousand times better chances of going to the casino than to be a day trader if you lack the uh, discipline of adequate risk management. So with that said, we are using AI to be able to catch the signals, but we also use traditional risk management. Uh, for example, we consider the volatility of the market, uh, the overall sentiments, and uh, we follow very closely as well the Federal Reserve of the United States uh, policy after every month. Got it. Do you have a demo for the new products that we can take a look? Yeah. Do uh, you want me to share my screen, perhaps? Yeah, or that would be great. You want? And for anyone who's listening, the website I'm going, it, it is public. I'm not accessing any uh, private uh, portal. You can go right now to, if you're listening to ai.cerexcope.com and you can start with a free account. Uh, okay, I'm in, I am logged in, and I'm going to be sharing my screen. Yeah, Um. can you show us uh, the overall process of how to make the um, investment decisions? Like where can I find the tokens and um, if there is any you know suggestions uh, created by AI that I could follow? Yep. So all of the UI, it has this little hint uh, with the question mark you can float. So for everyone that's also experiencing sort of uh, uh, go, going to the product and they want to find out, they can always refer to the uh, type hints that we leave around. Uh, so to answer your question, the AI score, it is the score we calculate internally based on the information that we have collected. For example, historical performance, on-chain transactions, uh, Twitter news content, right? So we track KOLs and influencers and we find out how is their sentiment, what are they promoting? Uh, and we compare this to historical performance. Um, one of the abilities that we have, one of the capabilities that we have as a data company is that we have a lot of data sets that are uh, time series sensitive and are not available by um, anyone out there, right? Uh, so for example, we have uh, information from social media that we have collected and we have uh, in a separate in a time series analysis and we are using this as a benchmark. So we know at what given point in time, some element was in place, let's say some the, the market or Twitter was uh, bullish 
or bearish, and then we compare the performance of the market at this given uh, point in time. So that's what I mean that we collect also uh, to earnings content. Once you log into the website, you can go to find tokens, and these are sorted by considering all the scores that you can find on, uh, on the top together. So all score means the combination of KOL calls, top gainers, which are the tokens that have increased the price the most in the last 24 hours, uh, smart money buys, trend and narrative, and BC possession changes as well. One of the things that we offer to our customers is the ability to uh, follow what the BCs are holding and also what they're selling. So a lot of people buy into a product and they know they have a particular BC that it's part of their uh, backers, and they want to know when the biggest holders or, or, or the BCs are going to sort of exit the project. We're able to uh, pick up the wallets uh, that the BCs are using to hold the tokens, and whenever there's a movement, we can alert the, the customers as well for this. So I click on Phantom. So I'm going to be showing you uh, different updates, uh, different tokens, how it looks. Uh, in the case of Bonks, we have uh, all the trading signals that you're seeing on screen. So every green dot uh, represents what we consider as a buy signal, uh, entry opportunity, so to speak. And we consider every red uh, uh, point on, on this graph as a sell signal or a bearish signal. We can filter them by types. So I'm showing you all the signals, but I can do, for example, uh, project news. And we see at the beginning of the month, uh, we see some green generated signals. Actually, we see uh, green signals uh, right when the market was bottoming out. So I think this is the one that you were mentioning about uh, Jackson that we were able to call Pepe uh, very uh, early on, right before pump. I can continue filtering the signals. So for example, we are able to offer you uh, smart money flows. You see that when the smart money was moving the tokens around, we already started generating sell signals right before the price drop. So some of the sell signals that we're able to generate from smart money, they come all the way from the last week of, of May. Right here is about uh, May 22nd. So we're using Jarvis as a way to guide our analysis, we're able to get uh, very accurate entry or exit positions. Uh, and combining this with traditional risk model analysis, it allows you to have a very um, optimized portfolio uh, that can follow and beat, uh, uh, it can follow uh, Bitcoin very closely, but it also outperforms it and generates alpha on its own on a lot of occasions. Some of the other features that you can have with Jarvis right now is that you can request us to have an, an analysis score. So in here we have the AI score generated by Jarvis. Um, it's, provides information about what is the general uh, market direction. So we see that we have a score of 60. This means that the market is neutral and it explains some of the reasons why it considered that the market should be, uh, your position should be neutral to the token that you're holding. Uh, it explains uh, its bullish reasonings, it's uh, neutral position, uh, neutral reasoning, uh, bearish metrics, and you can also find information where to buy the token. Uh, it's important to understand that not only uh, Jarvis is able to understand technical indicators, it's also relating the technical indicators to more than just the price on chain, right? A lot of the users, I think the mistakes that they do is that they will look at the technical indicator, let's say the RSI or the MACD, and then they will look at the price without considering other things as well. Jarvis unifies all of this and puts it in a nice, easy way to read. Then the only requirement you need for that is a, a natural language. Some of the other things that you can do with Jarvis is that you can track your KOLs opinions. So like I mentioned, we track over something like 15,000 KOLs. And we here we have people who are supporting or tweeting in favor of uh, Bunk, right? So we see people who are sending out these tweets or messages. What is their return? Uh, where is your win rate and as well as how many followers they have. So for the first time ever, now you have a company that is able to attribute directly towards people who are on social media, how good are they doing, right? Are they just tweeting to make some noise and getting some followers or actually get, do you expect to follow them in order to make a return? Jarby has a lot of features. I invite anyone, uh, you two as well, to try it out today. Got it. So basically, like the source of the data will come from uh, mailing from Twitter, uh, if it's market sentiment, 
Um, and also, because I know like Xerox Scope uh, previously was specialized in um, on-chain data. And then uh, some of the on-chain data like smart uh, money tracking, uh, those data will also will be put into a model. Yes, exactly. So it's not only um, the a single piece of data. You can think of Jarvis, like I mentioned, as a middleware where it sits between the applications and the users and it captures all of the users' inputs and we use this uh, in order to train it and improve it and release some of its uh, power features. So it's the first large language model for Web3 that is capable of understanding user intent and soon it's going to be capable as well of executing smart contracts in behalf of its users. Um, but actually, uh, let me ask a spicy question. Um, this is not the first time I'm hearing about you know um, data analysis. Maybe your competitor, Kaito, do you see Kaido AI as your competitor? And then uh, what what's your highlight compared to, to Kaido? I don't see them necessarily uh, as a competitor because they're more interested in using AI as sort of a search engine, right? Uh, within the industry where you can uh, go to the platform, you can ask any query. It would look at the records. I know they include audio messages or sort of the Twitter spaces. And uh, we, we can do that, right? Uh, Zero Scope can, can take a few weeks and we, we can launch a, a similar feature. Uh, but part of the reasons that I mentioned that I don't see them necessarily as a competitor is because we're not after the same space, right? Uh, Kato AI, it, it's completely closed source. Uh, they only use it internally for their own products. They're not doing integrations with anyone else out there. So, so that's one. The second one is that most of Kaito's information and I is that a lot of the relationship that their need to query to be able to get you that data is not actively uh, generated, right? So it, it could be considered stale. Uh, in Zurich Scope, we update our large language model on every on every block of the chain. So we're always giving it and feeding it uh, the latest information. Think about the following situation. You're looking at information at uh, from, from, from Kaito. You want to find out whatever or not the price of a token is going to look up. The project is doing good or, or doing bad. The importance of having a very high fresh rate uh, and make sure that you don't hit the cash is that there's a breaking news that comes out and the AI is not aware of this. It's going to try to explain the phenomenon that you're witnessing to some other parameter, right? So let's say the price suddenly dropped 20%, 30% in a day. The reason that the price dropped 10 or 20% in a day it's because the RSI was oversold or perhaps it is just normal behavior of, of a bear market. If the AI is lacking information or right, lacking knowledge about a news that just came out that one of the co-founders left the project perhaps, or that there was some enforcement by a regulatory agency, uh, which has a higher weight toward what can affect the price, it's going to subscribe that phenomenon towards some other form or factor. The other factor is the ability to have what I mentioned at the beginning, uh, unstructured data. Uh, reduce sort of say our focus to collect uh, in collecting the data in the ETL pipeline. This goes into the database, but the AI itself is the one handling all of the required connections uh, across the data points. Got it. Um, another question goes to you, because when you train the model and when you feed the data, um, they actually need a very high quality you know, data source. Like, How do you make sure those data are um, in high quality? Um, we use various sort of consumers in houses, right, for where we obtain the data. In the case of on-chain, we have our own full node services that is backed up by some RPCs providers. So we're always making sure that the data is, hasn't been tampered, it's, it has finality on the chain. But we're also responsible for keeping the uptime. We use uh, redundant fail-safe systems, uh, like I mentioned. So we use uh, a couple of them among them, Infura, uh, as well as uh, Quick Notes. For anyone listening and, and wondering what do we use, so we use uh, those two services. When it comes to other particular services, in the case of uh, uh, social media, we uh, capture snapshots with a very high uh, frequency. We, When we refresh this data, we uh, compare the information that was uh, set previously. One of the reasons we do this is to avoid potential manipulations, for example, people switching usernames or, or profile pictures or perhaps languages as well. 
to try to uh, confuse the AI. It's something that happens to social media that I think people should be aware of. For some other type of data, uh, we also use uh, Chainlink's uh, Oracle system, particularly for data that we must make sure that it hasn't been tampered with and it comes from the uh, outside world. So uh, Serifscope is one of the Chainlink's uh, builder program companies. So we are very close with them and any new feature and the little piece of technology that comes over Chainlink, it's also incorporated internally to make sure that our accuracy and results are good for our customers. So, so for the business, for the services, is that 2B or 2C? Can the uh, individual trader um, use the product? It is B2B to C. As you saw a moment ago when I shared my screen, you can use the product yourself. You can start today with asking 400 free questions per day. Uh, but if you're obviously a, a business and you want to be able to offer your customers uh, AI, there's only two ways you can do this. Either you will need to spend your resources internally, put up a team that has the expertise, af uh, afford the cost uh, to be able to launch sort of this feature. Uh, but this feature still will be limited to only your product, right? Uh, probably it's not going to be a very good AI if you don't have the required uh, trading data, but also you're liking the human back reinforcement. That is uh, something that you collect throughout the years. Uh, if you still, obviously, uh, like any other company out there, wants to be able to offer your customer space the ability to interact with a large language model, you will need to find a provider. And this is where we come in. So Syrup's called Jarvis, a uh, large language model. It's trained on all available data on chain as long as we support the network. So this means that regardless of where you launch, we already have the data that is required for you to offer to your customers. So that's where I mentioned that it's B2B2C. Gotcha. Done this year, 2024. Um, any important steps that Xerox Scope is um, going to take to ensure the accessibility uh, to a broader audience? Uh, every day we're launching new features. Um, the ones that I showed you recently about the KOLs Influencers News, it came out about two and a half weeks ago. We are um, unhobbling uh, our AI. Uh, Hubble is this concept that it's the training wheels of AI. And there's a number of reasons why you want to do that. Uh, particularly, you want to be able to account for the training data that goes into it and to be able to explain certain behaviors without throwing in new data that obscures what you already have. So the so training wheels and safety guardrails are, are in place for a reason, but we're not the only ones, right? Everyone in the industry is placing their own guardrails and fail-safe system. Uh, we are working on removing them, making more... Uh, like you said, uh, spicy uh, predictions. Uh, but we're always diligent and careful since some of the recommendations that we do have to do with financial decisions. So we always uh, tell our customers that even though some of these features are uh, already out there on the market, they always need to perform their own due diligence and, and pursue the questions. Uh, what can you expect from us uh, after summer? Uh, we are going to be launching uh, various ecosystems partnerships. Uh, for anyone listening, I can give you a heads up. We are going to be launching one with the Mental ecosystem, where users of Mental uh, are going to be able to have access to uh, uh, to Jarvis, which is our large language model. And a similar thing is going to happen uh, throughout the year. Uh, Syrup Sky is going to be partnering with wallet providers, uh, and we're going to be integrating Jarvis into these applications as well. So if you're a wallet user, imagine, for example, having your OKX, BitGet, uh, Token Pocket, uh, MetaMask wallet with Jarvis uh, included there in, directly inside uh, the wallet to be able to provide you information, not just what is on chain, but also make recommendations about what you're already holding as well. Gotcha. So this comes to the question of the security um, and um... How does AI help to manage the risks associated with DeFi trading? There's a, a limit or risk profile that uh, the AI can follow. But considering that if you have access to a private key, there's nobody that can stop you from uh, making a transaction on chain. We need to consider that the best line of defense is how you handle your, your private. The best second line of defense is which con smart contracts do you interact with? You're talking about an, an email account, you have access to your password, perhaps I cannot log into the account, even if I know your password, even if I know your two-factor authentication. Why? There could be other restrictions in place, such as that you need to receive an additional uh, call to the email that you're trying to sign in. Uh, there are some other rules that you can need to follow. For example, if you're trying to log into an exchange account, if you're talking from a new device, you cannot make any withdrawals without a period of time. So there are, there are guardrails, but when it comes to uh, blockchain, there's not such a thing. Having access to the private key, 
what can be considered analog to having access to the password or email, uh, it's the only thing that you're going to need to be able to transact using that particular wallet, right? So AI is not going to uh, fix this problem for you, right? AI is not going to handle better your private keys than following uh, common sense and reason are going to allow you to. The second one is that it's a smart contract risk, right? How many smart contracts do you interact with? What are you approving? What are you allowing? AI can help greatly on this factor since it follows and tracks uh, addresses that are associated with malicious activity online. So, for example, if we suspect that you're going to transact with somebody that has previously suspected of deploying honeypots or malicious smart contracts or is associated with some form of a scam, uh, Jarvis is going to be able to warn you against this possible risk that you're putting yourself. Gotcha. So security, um, AI can be applied to. Well, what are some other areas that the AI um, could be utilized in a, in a DeFi trading process? Signals that uh, it can generate. Um, and besides you know, coming up with ideas for risk management, I think one of the most important with AI is find out what you're blind to. I, I like this quote from Morgan Stanley. It's from The Psychology of Money, which is a great book. The quote goes, risk is what's left after everything you can think of. People think that they can sort of calculate risk. They can say, I am going to be ready for a 10% market drop or a 50% market drop. And you think this is risk. The risk is when the market drops 15, 25, 35%, right? In a single day. And then your plan go, goes up in smoke. So risk, it's always what's left. It's not what you account for. And I think um, this is something that has to do more towards our biases as humans, right? Uh, it has to do with behavioral psychology, more towards uh, the technology that is available for us to make decisions. So we are the ones at fault. Um, like they said, markets, they can be efficient, but we are not because we are emotional beings and we represent our emotions in the market. With AI, you can find out things about your trading style or your decisions that perhaps will be invisible to you as well. So if you're day trading or you have a pattern for trading or you have a strategy that you want to sort of uh, test the hypothesis, whatever or not is profitable, maybe you think it's a great idea, maybe you don't know how to code, you can talk with the AI system and it's going to be able to assess whatever or not you actually have something good or something terrible and you shouldn't actually play it out. So AI, I think it's going to be uh, working more on, on that particular role, on helping us identify uh, patterns that are bad for us, but they're also very easily uh, can be overcome as soon as you remove the element of human emotions. That makes sense. Looking forward to all those like new features. And um, I think right after this call, I'm going to try out all this um, beta version of, of your products. And thank you very much for your time, Philip. And also thanks, Chow, for joining us today. Thanks, Philip. Thanks a lot to both of you. It was uh, wonderful. And I look forward to meeting you in person as well on ETHCC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one more thing. Uh, we're going to host an event in ECC. Um, I think that will cover both AI and some other topics like Solana VM, scalability, very, very uh, heated topics. So happy to have you as well, Philip, at our event. And if any of you that this audience is uh, who will go to Belgium this year, happy to meet you in person. Thanks a lot and see you soon. Great. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. Bye.